Hey everyone, it's Mark with Mark's Virtual Real Estate Channel. We're back with another Upland video. And today I'm gonna go over how I sell my properties in Upland. So I've done a lot of videos on how I buy them and find and possibly do collections or look for yield versus flipping. But I haven't really talked about how I sell them. So I'm gonna talk about that today. Um, it's not anything too crazy complicated. <laughs> I'll go over how that works. Um, we'll also talk about the lazy nose, the progress there, our community build in um, Neponsant, how that's doing, and maybe touch base on prices and some of those nodes as well. All right, love all the likes, love the shares, love the comments, keep those coming. And I have a real real estate YouTube channel, Invest for More. And if you are looking for information on our flips, rentals, walkthroughs of all our properties in real life, check that out. And um, real life real estate kind of has helped me to work in Upland in the virtual real estate world, especially with selling property. So we'll talk a lot about that here as well. All right, so first off, I'm gonna update us on the lazy nodes. A lazy node is just a community effort to get together and buy properties and build stuff and do cool things in Neponsant. And we've kind of started two main lazy nodes in Neponsant in Queens and in Henry Ford in Detroit. And so in Neponsant, you can see all the properties I bought here. And um, I did see one comment from someone who said they thought nodes were a ripoff because people just start them where they have a bunch of properties to raise the price and then dump all their properties and um, it makes some money. And I'm not gonna lie, that could happen. But within a Ponset node, I literally owned zero properties in it when I started it. I released that video saying I was gonna start it there before I bought one property. So um, it definitely was not a pump and dump for me. And I don't think I've sold any properties in the Ponset. I did trade one or two to people on our Discord and I'll have a link to that if you wanna join our Discord. Um, who were looking for properties in the ponds and had properties to trade. So they wanted to get in on the node. So I could see that happening in some cases, but most of the nodes I've seen have not been pump and dumps, but more um, sustained community efforts. I think they had good karma behind them. We'll put it that way. All right, so you can see some of the properties I have here. I've completed two small town homes in the ponds it, and then we did the drawing the other day to see who would win the community build where we would combine our spark to try and help them build quicker. And that's this property right here. And I'm sure we'll do this again as soon as this one is done. But um, I think when we started, this had 30 some days to go before it was finished. And now two days. So good job, everybody. We've had a lot of people contribute spark to this property and not just like 0.01 spark. And I'm not saying that's bad if that's all you can contribute or if you do contribute that, like any little bit helps. Now I sound like a charity, but no. <laughs> um, it was cool to see so many people contributing Spark and good amounts of Spark as well. So um, that was cool. So that one should be done soon. And I think we'll do another community build contest. And all I did before was you just have to own a property in one of the two nodes, have a building started, and then comment on the video that I create for that one and you're in. So that was cool to do that and to see kind of how Neponsant is doing here. Oh, if I hit the right button, I can. It's always cool to see that view and see the buildings. I think we got a new, lot of new builds started by doing that contest as well, which was cool to see. All right. Now, why don't we check out. Oh, I hit the wrong button again. Henry Ford and see how it's doing. Because I do have some news in Henry Ford. Henry Ford is all the way up here. And. Let's see here, zoom in. My build is complete, yay! So we inaugurate the structure, which means you get lots of happy graffiti, not graffiti. <laughs> um, there we go. So that one is done now too. So that means I can start a new build somewhere. I think I would love to build, we built two in Neponset just now. You can see I've got three in Henry Ford. I think I wanna build one right here and just kind of get a line of townhomes going. You can see two more there, another one built there, another one started there. I think it'd be cool to try and just get like one full row filled out. And I don't know if uh, whoever owns these other ones, if they're uh, willing to start building there, but that'd be cool too. So I think that's the plan. I don't think I wanna do that on this video because that takes some time. And I think a lot of you have seen me do that before. All right, now I'm gonna to go to upexcellent.me 
and just see how the prices are in those two neighborhoods. No ponds in. Oh, there's a couple dropping a little bit. So we were right at 35 for a long time. Now there's a couple more that have dropped down a little bit. So if you want to get in and start a build and get ready for our next contest, that would be a good time to do it with those two properties. And you could make offers on them too. You don't have to uh, always pay full price. And then let's see what Henry Ford looks like. Oh, there's a, another cheap one-ish there at 20. Okay, so this one's been for sale for a long time. You can't build on it, it's too narrow, that's why. But that one at 43 should be, oh, it's on Churchill. Whew, I like Churchill. I might have to see where this one's at. Let's see if it's right next to one of my other ones. Oh, it is, it's right next to, oh. There's a line right there, right across the street. Yeah, I'm gonna have to buy that one, sorry. <laughs> okay, now there aren't any cheap ones, but there have been some cheap ones pop up once in a while in there, or cheaper ones. So, we just added to the Henry Ford collection. Okay, okay, now moving on to how I sell property. So some people, um, a lot of people are bitter about this game, or maybe they're, I don't know, but have accused me of the only reason I can sell properties is because I have a YouTube channel and promote them all the time. And those who watch my YouTube channel would know I hardly ever promote any of my properties I have for sale. I think I've mentioned a couple of them maybe up here in Riverdale in um, the Bronx and literally they haven't sold since I promoted those at all. So I almost never promote my properties or list, list any specific properties. I mean, maybe if someone's browsing for a property and they see my name and they recognize it, they might say, oh, that'd be, I'll buy that one. But I really doubt it too. Um, honestly, it's not that hard how I sell properties. It's based on the market and what the market is doing at the time and um, based on what other prices are, based on floors, sizes, all that, um, you know, those different contributions to the value. And so some sell fast, some don't sell that fast. And there's a lot of different factors that go into it, but it's not terribly difficult. So, for example, I minted a bunch of properties in the Averne neighborhood. And speaking of nodes, I thought about doing a node there because I had like 20 some properties in there. But in the end, I thought it wasn't a good node because there's too many properties there. So that's why we chose Neponzi because it's much smaller. So if I was really being selfish, I would have started my node here. But that's okay. So um, I have these properties here in... Avern, and we can see I have that one for sale for $8. I was just trying to sell some for dollars and see if that worked. And then I probably have this one for sale for Upix, or maybe it's for dollars too. Oh, it's for dollars too. Um, is this one for sale for Upix? Nope. <laughs> oh, they're all that way. Okay, maybe I'll change one of these. So um, I'll tell you why I did that here in a second as well. Let me check on this one. Oh, that one hasn't been listed for sale yet. So here's a good, a good example. All right, so I have these properties in Avern. Um, the first thing I kind of do is maybe I'll click on my button here on the bottom right, that building button, and see what other properties you know close to it are selling for. Seven, 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 seventy-five, sixty, seventy-nine, ninety-eight, and I can see you know seventy-five hundred for thirty-two Upix is kind of the cheapest one. And what is my property? It's 7,500, that's what I bought it for, and 23 Upix. So that doesn't seem like um, I'm gonna be able to sell that for very much based on what I see there. So that gives me an idea of where my price should be, and then maybe I'll go here to upexland.me again, and I'll go to Queens, and I'll type in a Vern, oh. R, is it R, it's Arvin, right? Arvern, Arvern, there we go. I've done that before. <laughs> and um, we'll see what's for sale there. And we can see I've got for sale Upix by sale price filtered out. So that will only show me property for sale for Upix, not dollars. And we can see where the floor is 7,400. And this is cool too, because you can see the mint price here. And then we can see the markup, what the markup is on those properties. And so, 
it's weird how the, some of the mint prices were lower than the others. Oh, maybe I didn't mint that one. That might be one I bought in the secondary market. That's why I paid more for it. But you can see the floor is right about 7,400, 7,500 to 8,000. So we can expand this and just kind of keep seeing more and more down the road what stuff is selling for. And you can see there's a lot of properties for sale in this neighborhood. What is the total? Way more than 100 if we load more. There's 383. That's one reason why I didn't do a note here because there's so many properties for sale here. So seeing this, um, and if I have this property, I would come here and I say, okay, um, I don't really care about this property. I don't like it. It'd be nice to have the UPEX to use something else. I'll put it up for sale. I'll probably sell it for UPEX this time. And I'll think, okay, if I do 79, 90, that means I'm going to get 75.90 back. Now, if I bought this on the secondary market, I already paid, if I paid 7,500, I already paid a 5% fee, 375. <clears throat> so basically my break even is 78.75. So if I sell it for 79.90, I'm actually losing money. Now, my net worth won't be hurt if I sell it for this much because I already paid that 375 fee. It's already kind of been deducted from my net worth my UPEX. So if I don't care about the profit and loss, I'm still ahead of the game from where I am now to sell it for that much. Now, if I care for the profit and loss, then I want to kind of add that 300, 400 into it. And I'd say, oh, let's make this, you know, 8,400 instead. Now I have a small profit and I'm not in a big, huge rush to sell this property. There's no, um, burning need for money. I have quite a bit here. So, I would probably price it just for that price and it might sell quickly. It might take a week. It might take a month. Who knows? But those usually sell when I do that, right? Because the floor will move up and down some, even in these neighborhoods with lots of properties for sale, it'll move up and down. One day I might be, you know, 10th from the floor. Three days later, I might be the bottom of the floor, or maybe I'm not low enough to sell it, but that's just how I price some of those. And I, I want to try and find one here that is one I minted. Did I mint that one? I don't know if I minted these. Um, it's pretty big. I probably did mint that one. So this is a bigger one. I either minted it or bought it for 7350. And then I can come up here and say, okay, the property size is 42. And so I can come back to up excellent.me kind of scroll down here until I find one that's close to there's a 42 right there. Oh, it's my property. Um, one just like it. And I have that listed for 89.90. It hasn't sold yet. Um, definitely making a profit on that. I'm kind of the lowest mint or asking price for that size of property. So I think, okay, there's still not a huge demand in this area, but things are selling. Cause I know I've sold quite a bit in here. I might say 84.90. That will still make me a profit. I can sell the property probably fairly quickly at that price. We'll see what happens. So that's in a neighborhood where I have lots of properties. It's low priced. Um, I'm not making huge profits. I've already made quite a bit of money in this neighborhood kind of before the collections were announced, maybe right after the collections were announced because prices are much higher before the collections are announced. So that's one thing I say is when I try and sell properties during a collection, a lot of times I will try and sell them before that collections announced because it's such a crapshoot to know if some of these neighborhoods are going to be collections or not. Some really seem like they should be and they won't be. Some seem like they should be and they are. And then some of these bigger ones with lower price properties are just, you never know what's going to be picked. So it's usually better to sell them beforehand. After the collection, you kind of have to sell properties like this where you're not making a big profit, usually uh, making a little bit, but I still make a little bit and I'm able to take this UPEX out of this neighborhood, put in my account and use it for other things like buying properties and lazy nodes or getting ready for the next city release that type of, you know, um, use of my money. Now that's just selling stuff in a very, you know, not that valuable node. Same thing kind of goes for all of these properties in here. I think most of these I have for sale. Um, let's see here, that little narrow guy. Yep. I've got it for sale. I bought it for 7,000. So again, I'm not making hardly anything on these little, non-collection, not that popular areas, right? My goal isn't to make a killing. It's really 
to get some of that money back so I can invest it in other areas. Now, if we look at more expensive areas, I'll kind of show you how I price properties and we'll see um, how that works. Now, before we get too far, oh, I have lots of messages. Um, I sold that one in Venice. Maybe we'll go to that property real quick because this is a good example of, um, I believe this is Venice Beach, right? Yes, or Venice. So this property I minted, um, I thought Venice would be a really good place to mint properties. It wasn't because it's so expensive. It didn't mint out even after it was a collection. Um, I bought quite a few properties there, spent a lot of money there, but I did the same strategy. I priced things just right above where my mint was. I was still making a small profit, but not much. And it took a long time, months and months and months, but eventually it sold. And you can see that it sold right now. As the neighborhood slowly mints out, it gets more valuable. Over time, you can sell properties. But if I was trying to sell it quickly, I probably would have had to sell it really close to mint, just over it, um, not made anything, or maybe even taken a small loss if I wanted to sell it really, really quickly. Um, that's an interesting trade. I want to look at that, but maybe not just a second. Um, I sold another one in... Um, Los Angeles just now for 39,000. And this one I minted for like 33 or 34. So I did make a couple thousand upics here. Uh, how did I end up doing that? Well, that was part of the nodes. So there's also ways to make money in nodes. Century City announced in um, Beverly Wood, they were gonna expand their node to there. So I minted some properties there, put them up for sale. A couple have sold um, because even if properties are for mint in a certain area, some people will still buy them on the secondary market because they don't want to send their explorer there. They don't want to travel there. They want to buy properties there without spending all that money to get there or time. And so you can still pro sell properties that are in neighborhoods that are unminted for more than mint price, which seems weird to some people, but you can do it. So we have that one that sold. Um, and then I did sell um, some in that neighborhood for $4. And I want to show that. Why would I do that? Oh, he's cashing out of the game. He doesn't know. That's not why. <laughs> um, and then there's one in Los Angeles, again, a low price one that just happened to sell now that I priced a long time ago. And you can see some of these other ones have sold over time, some for more, some for less. So just putting stuff up for sale and eventually, you know, things will sell. It's kind of interesting to see that, but you have to price them right, price them well. So why would I have stuff for sale for dollars? Well, if I come to some of these neighborhoods and want to buy things, um, I'll check out my profile here. You can see I don't have a whole lot of dollars. I have 114. Well, it's nice to have those one because I can buy Spark with it if Spark Week comes up again without having to take my credit card or debit card or whatever to buy it. So I don't have to put game into, money into the game if I sell stuff for dollars and use that money to buy Spark. So that's nice. And then if I want to buy properties for dollars, you can get a better deal using dollars and upics. So we're going to use an example of my Riverdale ones up here. And let me come up here. We'll go to the Bronx. So if I want to put more money into the game without buying Spark, um, it's usually, I'm going to switch this from just upics to for sale all. It's usually better to buy properties with dollars because you can get them cheaper sell them to get your upex if you're not in a big hurry. If you're in a hurry, um, probably better just to buy straight upex. But if you have time, it helps to uh, wait. So we can see here, are we in Riverdale? Last price, sale price. Look at that, that's crazy. Okay, oh, stuff has dropped. So um, I used to have the cheapest properties here by a long shot, but with Genesis Week, I think there's a new city being released here soon. People are trying to liquidate and get their money, so you see prices drop. This is Riverdale neighborhood, where I have sold a number of properties in the, if we come down here, 180,000 to 240,000 UPEX range. Um, you can see I have one here for sale for 189, which was the, or no, there's one for sale, 167.9, which was the lowest price one by far. Now there's some really cheap ones. Look at that one. For only 120 that's a smoking deal but i always keep buying stuff in riverdale thinking it's a smoking deal and then i've had trouble selling them lately so maybe i'll make them an offer that's cheap but here's what my main point look at this one so you can buy them for 85 dollars. that's so cheap 
and then you could probably for sure make some money selling them, especially once the city's released and that's done and prices kind of stabilize again. Um, you can make some money there buying stuff that cheap. That's so cheap. And, and I'll, I'll use the same example. Hopefully it, it works out in my favor here. <laughs> in my node where we're just checking prices and we saw what the lowest one was 33.5 or 34 or something in there. Let's see what you can buy. You can buy one for 30 for dollars. So you can get it definitely cheaper um, if you buy them for dollars. And that's why I was selling some of mine for dollars just to see if they'd sell. And it was selling for almost the same price as Upix too. If you saw that, you know, I was listening for 750 and eight and I'm selling them for 7,500, eight, 8,500 in that price range. So you, it's another way to make money is to sell with dollars, use those dollars to get really good deals, then sell those properties for Upix. All right. But again, um, how would I value properties and more expensive properties in a neighborhood like Riverdale? You could see now that I just got off of all of that. Let me see here. <laughs> um, and I don't always sell property that, that shows it right there, right? I don't always sell everything like I would hope I do. Sometimes they do great. Sometimes they don't. So we can go to Riverdale and look at the floor again. So this gives me an idea of what values are. So if I was going to buy a property in Riverdale right now and say, okay, what can I sell this property? What is it worth? Um, I would come on here and say, okay, the lowest price one is 120, which is the cheapest I've seen in Riverdale for months and months and months. That's so cheap. I've seen a few in the 149. I think this one, yeah, this one I bought for 140. It was a smoking deal, I thought, but I still haven't been able to sell it. So maybe it wasn't that good of a smoking deal. But then, like I said, I've sold them from 180 to 220. So um, prices are slowly kind of dropping in Riverdale, which is interesting. Hopefully they keep climbing back up again. But what I would do is I'd look at here and I'd say, okay, um, really cheap, really cheap. And then we kind of see some more consistency here, 160, 165, 165. So in, in my experience too, seeing the note over time, which is something that helps a lot. The more you study a neighborhood, the more you see it over an extended period of time, the more you'll get to see what the values tend to be. So I can look at this and say, hey, these are really cheap kind of um, offshoots here. I don't think that's the real floor, but maybe the floor is changing. Maybe that's why we see it. Or maybe just those two happen to be listed because people want to get money for the new release. That could be it too. So I look at this and I say, okay, I really think the floor is more around 160. If I buy this property for 120, I think I can sell it for at least 150, but I might have to wait a few weeks or maybe even longer to get that money back. But that's where I would probably value it based on these comps. And so looking at comps, how do I figure out what my price would be? It's kind of like real life where you look at how much a house sold for in the last six months. You see what the house was like. You look at the size, you know, that's a big one for 160, right? Look at that mint price. That's pretty low. There's a big one, another um, pretty low mint price. So you have to compare not just the price, but how big it is. Maybe, um, you know, if there's a structure on it, that can change the value too. There's one for 220 with a structure on it. So there's another one for sale with a structure on it. That adds value to it. And you have to kind of look at these factors and say, okay, you know, how does this add value to the property? Subtract it. Something else we can do. Um, I don't know if Riverdale has too much of this. Let me get in here. Um, are any of them on the water, right? That can affect value too. Or are they really like, look at that one. That's kind of a waterfront with a structure on it. They want $400 for it. So that changes value as well. Now in real life, you know, we can kind of see what other properties sell for and, um, their attributes over time. It's a, actually a little easier <laughs> to find value sometimes. Here in Upland, um, I guess we could look at sold comps. Um, it might be a little trickier, but when you get on the water, when you have structures built on it, right? That's a very arbitrary value increase for some people. Some people really like that. Other people don't care. So that's where it can get tricky, but that all adds value as well. So for the most part, you know, um, if I'm valuing a property in here, I want to make sure, right? The properties I'm looking at are like similar in size to mine, have similar size and then kind of a similar area. Don't have anything special. Like they're sitting on, you know, um, the water or they're on a collection street. Obviously that makes a difference. Those are things I want to look at when I price my properties and make sure I'm pricing them in the right ballpark. And something else to consider too, we talked about this earlier. Look how skinny this is. I wonder, um, 
you know, if I were to try and build on here, if I could. Oh, I have it for sale. Well, take it off the market. Because that also affects value as well, which we saw in the um, Henry Ford node, where that one property has been for sale for very cheap, for a very long time, because you can't build on it. It does not fit. See, that's something I missed and I didn't look at when I bought it. Um, they'll let me try myself here. But it says a small townhouse won't fit on here. That looks like a big townhouse. But you can see, oh, it's so close. Look how close that is. But it won't do it. It won't fit. So that makes that lot less valuable because you can't fit a structure on it. And that's something I really should have looked at before I bought it. But I didn't. So <laughs> um, you live and you learn. All right. So that, you know, so if I was to sell this lot, now I'm thinking, huh, maybe I need to be, you know, at 159 to get this one sold, which is a very small profit, but I could still make a little bit of money of doing that. And um, since I can't build on it, that's one I kind of want to get rid of. And these other ones I have right here, you could see they're a little bigger. I think I could build on them. Maybe they're pretty small too. So this could be why I'm not selling stuff. Oh, I'm pretty sure I could build on those, but I won't try now, but that's something else to consider when you're buying and selling things is can you build on them or not? So again, um, selling properties, if it's in a collection, you're looking at comps. If it's not in a collection, you're looking at comps. You're kind of trying to stay in that floor unless it's a real big property then you want to, you know, price it higher, but it's going to be harder to sell the big ones because they're more expensive. Um, if you're doing new city releases, all those rules change. We've talked about that. Um, you can get more money. There's more speculation, more people guessing on where collections are. But again, I'm looking at those floors. I'm looking at comp properties, seeing where they're at and um, trying to sell properties based on those. And something else I want to talk about too, before I get, I've been going a long time. <laughs> um, right. I had all these properties in our Ar Arvine, Arverne, whatever it was. Um, I had 25 at least at one point. I don't want to put all of them on the market at once, right? I don't want to flood the market. I don't want to drop prices on my own. I don't want to cut my own legs off. So I'll put, you know, three or four properties for sale at a time. Once those sell, I'll come back and do it again. Once those sell, do it, come back and do it again. Cause it just kind of looks bad. I think it hurts the neighborhood. If you see 15 properties for sale all below the floor by the same person And that I'd try not to do that. Okay. Hopefully that helps. I feel like I rambled a lot and talked a lot about a lot of different things, but it's not something where I just sell stuff right away all the time, unless it's a new city release. That's when you can really buy and sell a lot quickly on collection guesses, even after collections are announced, um, even in neighborhoods that may or may not be collections. But after the cities are released and you're trying to sell stuff, a lot of times you just have to take real low profits. Sometimes maybe even lose a little bit of money if you want to get them sold and just realize that, Hey, Sometimes that's worth it if you can take that upex, invest it in better properties that will make you money or in city releases that will make you money in the long run. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, like I said, we'll have another contest here coming soon. As soon as that property is done, I'll start building another property here soon as well. Love the likes, love the comments, love the shares. Keep those coming. We'll be back here soon.